Great to see you here again. In the previous presentation, I was looking deeper into the logical equivalences, how we can find new equivalences, how we can prove those equivalences, and it's a very important part of compound propositions. Now, we looked at the different laws, very important laws like the De Morgan's laws, which we will use later in other proofs and so on. Now, in this video, we are looking at propositional satisfiability, the applications of it, and how to solve problems using propositional satisfiability. First of all, we have to define what is propositional satisfiability. And we can say that a compound proposition is satisfiable when there is at least one assignment of truth values that makes it true. So when we can find a combination of truth values that makes the compound proposition true, we can say that it is satisfiable. On the contrary, when a compound proposition doesn't have any assignment for which we have a true truth value, then we call it unsatisfiable. There is no combination of assignments that makes it true. It means that the output of the truth table, the result, are all Fs. All outputs are false. And this is, in fact, the negation of a tautology or the negation of an unsatisfiable compound proposition is a tautology because a tautology means it's all true. No solution, then we call it unsatisfiable. Now, let's look at the solution of a satisfiability problem. What is a solution? Well, once we find that particular assignment of truth values, that combination of truth values that makes the compound proposition true, and we can show, in fact, that is satisfiable, that combination of assignment is a solution for the compound proposition. Now, there may be more solutions. It means that there are more combinations of assignments that makes the compound proposition true. We can use truth tables to do this, but what we prefer to do, and what we're going to do here, is in fact looking at the truth tables that can be used to prove if an assignment is satisfiable or not. It's easier or it's more interesting to do it by reasoning because it creates more logic how to work with those equivalences and those assignments. Let's have a look at a way to prove satisfiability by reasoning. And we consider a following statement. We have three partial compound propositions, P, OR, and Q. Q, OR, not R. R, OR, not P. And the statement is basically P, OR, not Q, and Q, OR, not R, and R, OR, not P. And we have to prove, is this satisfiable or not? In order to be satisfiable, all three, P or not Q, Q or not R, and R or not P, have to be true. Now, let's suppose that P is true, Q is false, and R is true. Basically, we're looking at the true table now. So what happens? P or not Q? Well, P is true, not Q is true, so it is true, that's great. R or not P? Well, R is true, not P is false, but R or not P is then true. And now we have Q, Q is false, not R is also false, so basically Q or not R are in fact false which leads to that that statement is false. And basically, in this case, this is not a solution 
to this statement. When we look at it, the only possibility we can try to find out is that P, Q and R have the same truth value. They are either all true or all false. So basically, we have to consider those elements that they are in fact the combination of all these parts. Now we are going to look at the application of satisfiability on a Sudoku puzzle. When we look at the Sudoku puzzle, it's a puzzle which has nine by nine cells in a grid, and there are nine three times three subgrids, or we call it also blocks. And here we have rows numbered from one till nine, and columns also numbered from one to nine, and we see the nine three by three blocks in here. Now, when we look at it, we start with the Sudoku puzzle with some numbers in it. So basically, when you're looking at an unsolved Sudoku puzzle, you will see that there are already some numbers which have been added to the grid. Now, what are we going to do? So the numbers that we already uh, put in this table, in this grid, are what we call given. This is the start of the problem. Now, what we have to do is we have to solve the puzzle. And in each row, columns and blocks, we have to find the nine numbers that we have. And the numbers can be between one to nine. So every row has to contain the nine numbers. Every column has to contain the nine numbers and the same for the block. Now, basically, we are looking at this. We have to look at the propositions that we are going to use in the Sudoku puzzle. And we first have the proposition P, I, J, N. And it describes that the value in cell I is the row number, J is the column number, and N is the value. So now, in our case, we find that P in cell 3, 3 is 2. This is a true statement because that value is actually equal to 2. Now, when we look at the other proposition we have in position 8, 6, row 8, column 6, we say it is 6. And we see when we look at the column that it's basically not 6, but it's 8. So this proposition is false. What are the other conditions? Every row contains every number. Every column contains every number. Every block contains every number. And each cell only contains one number. So these are the elements that we have to look at. These are the conditions we have to satisfy. Let's have a look at the Sudoku puzzle in more detail. And let's express the condition that every column contains every number. The first step we have to do is to say that the column J contains the number N. So whatever we find in the column J from row 1 to row uh, 9, we have to find that the number n is in that column. So we have the nRE from i, the nRE or from i equal 1 to 9 of p, i, j, and n. The next step is to verify that the column j contains all numbers. So all numbers have to be there. So we have now to add the nRE and from n equal to 1 to 9 over all those columns to see if it is there or not. So now we have to find that all the numbers are in that specific column. And the last element is to assert that every column j contains every number. So now we have to add here the nRE and for j equal to 1 to 9 
in addition to the previous expression. So basically this is the first, one of the first elements that we do. We look at every column to be sure that it contains every number. Of course we have to do this uh, also for the rows and so on. Let's now have a look at the different uh, assert assertions, all the assertions that we have and we have basically uh, to verify that we have the values n in a cell. So p, i, j, n is the proposition. Every row contains every number, so we have the nary and bit from i equal to 1 to 9 of the nary and of n equal to 1 to 9 of the nary or of j equal to 1 to 9 of p, a, i, j, n. So this verifies that every row contains every number. The every column contains every number we've deducted in the previous slide. And now we have to look that every block contains every number. So we look at the blocks and our expression is a little bit more complex. We're not going to prove it here. So we have the nary of r equals 0 to 2 of the nary of s equal to 0 of 2, of the nary of n equal to 1, to 9, of the nary or from i equal 1 to 3, and the nary and or of j equal to 1 to 3, of p, 3r plus i, 3s plus j and n, and 3r plus i or 3s plus j, are the start and the end coordinates of every block that we have. Every cell contains only one number, so n cannot be equal to n uh, prime. So we find p of i, j, n. If p of i, j, n, then not p of i, j, n prime. So we have all the assertions here that will let's say, lead to the solution of the Sodoku puzzle. So when we look at all those conditions together, this is the expression of all these conditions. And it's not easy to get all those done uh, properly. We will talk about this later anyway. You can keep this somewhere for later reference. We are looking at solving satisfiability problems. We have to consider that satisfiability problems can become very complex. We can set up true tables and we can complete them by hand. Once we are getting more variables, more uh, elements, the number of rows in the true table will increase and it will increase with 2 to the power n. So when we have only p, we have 2 to the power 1, which is 2 rows. When we have two uh, propositions, we have 2 to the second, which is 4. When we have 3, for example, p, q, p, q, and r, we already have 8 rows, and it increases. So when we look at a table with 20 variables, we find 2 to the power 20, which is... 1,048,576 rows. Now, we, or you may remember a story from the old ages where somebody uh, did something for an emperor and the reward was quite simple. I want to have a grain on each field of the chessboard, but we start with one, then two, and we always double. And we come to an extremely large number, which is 2 to the power of 64. When you look at that, these things grow exponentially. And it is clear that solving complex satisfiability problems is only possible with powerful computers. And we will look into those things later on when we are going to discover more items in this course. So this was the last session, the last video of the third paragraph. We are going to start with the fourth paragraph, which is about predicates and quantifiers. 
you're doing a great job. This was quite a, a difficult uh, paragraph. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next session. Thank you and bye-bye.